Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I think that this discussion that we've had is now f uh, finally helping us to focus on the, the distinctions that I think have been missed quite a bit here. As a matter of fact, I think this discussion is very helpful for not only the committee but the public to understand what we are talking about with regard to the proposal. And, and this is what I mean. Uh, you have some saying that there are going to be cuts in Medicare. Uh, others saying, no, there's absolutely no cuts in Medicare. Turns out we need to understand what we are saying when we use the word Medicare. If you use the statutory required Medicare uh, benefit that is allowed, uh, yes, the cuts to Medicare Advantage do not reduce the statutory Medicare requirements. If you're talking about the actual benefits that a Medicare Advantage uh, beneficiary under Medicare receives, very much in, in reality, yes, you are seeing a reduction in what they would receive. In fact, yesterday I believe that the uh, testimony of the CBO was that if this proposal in the mark were to be implemented, that the additional benefits above the statutory requirements for Medicare uh, fee-for-service would be reduced by just a little bit under 50 percent over 10 years. And so what, what we are seeing is that there is a category of recipients of Medicare of those who are under the Medicare Advantage plan who will, in fact, see what they receive in their health care plan reduced by about 50 percent of the addition over Medicare, uh, the basic Medicare benefit provided in statute. And I don't think there's any way to get around that. Now, when the President made his comment that in the bill, in, in the plan that we adopt, we should, we should make it so that, it, I think his words were that if anybody wants to keep the health care that they have today, their health care plan today, they will be able to keep it. That's not true about if this plan, if this proposal were adopted, that's not true for Medicare Advantage recipients. The reason it's not true is because their benefits are going to be reduced by about 50 percent of that increment over the basic statutory Medicare right. Would the Senator yield? Uh, briefly, yes. I'm not done yet. I, I want to thank you because you've just made the argument for my amendment, which will be coming later. I'll be waiting for your <laughs> which amendment, is Senator. <laughs> that those with Medicare Advantage existing will be grandfathered in and will not lose that benefit, but on a going forward basis, we're going to squeeze the efficiencies out of that extra 14 percent that has gone into Medicare Advantage. I'll listen very carefully to your, yeah. to your let amendment. Let me just and, say this. Um, um, it's getting, we're approaching one o'clock. Um, I, I suggest that we um, speak just briefly on this and have a vote and then break, then break for lunch. Well, I, I'll be glad to wrap up quickly. I wasn't finished before I yielded to the senator from Florida. And also, I also have a modification. Uh, ask, uh, unless the senator doesn't agree to the modifications I suggest, then I'm going to have a side by side. It'll take me a minute or two to explain that. But go ahead, Senator. All right. Well, then let, let me just wrap up. I mean, what, what are we talking about when we're talking about those who are currently under Medicare Advantage who will be deprived of their health care plan if this proposal is adopted? Well, in Idaho, that's 60,000 people. That's 27 percent of the Medicare population in Idaho who will face that circumstance. Uh, I think nationally the percentage is about 20 percent of the Medicare population that is under Medicare Advantage. So this is not an insignificant proportion of the Medicare recipients in our country who will, in fact, see their health care plan reduced by this proposal. And, and the purpose of this amendment is to protect that aspect of it. It's been characterized that the extra payments that are going into Medicare Advantage are being pocketed by the, the insurance providers. Uh, the reality, as has been indicated, is that they are operating on about a 4 percent margin, and that extra is plowed back into extra benefits for Medicare beneficiaries who choose the Medicare Advantage plan uh, over those who simply stick with fee-for-service. And in terms of whether the people who are in Medicare uh, today like this plan, uh, my understanding is uh, that uh, nationally the satisfaction rate with Medicare Advantage is well over 80 percent, maybe approaching 90 percent. In Idaho, it's 80 percent plus. 
the point is people like this part of Medicare. They like the fact that they can get an enhanced benefit by moving into Medicare Advantage. And the whole purpose of Senator Hatch's amendment, of which I'm proud to be a co-sponsor, is to make it clear that we are not going to allow uh, those people, that significant proportion of our Medicare population, to lose that coverage.